Welcome back. This is going to be my daily forecast for the U.S. indices. We're going to look at the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the Nasdaq. If you like to support our channel, you're welcome to hit the subscribe button down here in the corner, hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. So what a day this was. Um, well, there's a lot to get through. First of all, coronavirus is still in the, uh, in the world and it is basically wreaking havoc on the world economy. That's the first thing that is going uh, wrong in the world economy and the stock market at, at this moment. Second of all, uh, there is not going to be any stimulus, as we have been discussing several times on this channel. Um, there, it was very unlikely that the Democrats were going to give Donald Trump a win. Donald Trump was is probably the worst negotiator, negotiator in the world, so that he wasn't any help, and Republicans were basically only interested in uh, confirming uh, the new Supreme Court justice uh, before the election. So that was basically a cocktail for disaster. And at this point, there is so much uncertainty, and that is probably the main reason why we have this massive fall today. So we are down 3% in the S&P 500. Um, we are still falling. And the same goes for the Dow Jones and the Nasdaq. And uh, we could see some ugly weeks and probably ugly months uh, until uh, January or even February. Because at this point, uh, John, uh, Joe Biden is set to win the presidential election if, uh, if, um, if the polls are right this time. He's going to win in a landslide. And that is just going to make Donald Trump even more erratic. He will use every single power there is in his arsenal to take away his uh, uh, Joe Biden's win. And that means that we most likely will not see any movement in any stimulus, which basically is needed at this point in order to get the United States economy working again. And if the United States economy is not working, the world economy is not working. That That is... 100%. China may be the producer of the world, but Europe and um, Europe and United States economy are basically the consumers of those goods. So it doesn't work without the consumers. So we're going to be in a lot of trouble all around the world if the, if the United States economy is is going to be this weak. So there most likely won't be any stimulus until February and that is going to be bring a lot of uncertainty to the stock market. And therefore, well, there will just be a lot of volatility and we may see a retest of several lows. It is highly unlikely that we'll see any uh, major movement to the upside because the Fed can do many things. The Fed cannot save the uh, United States economy as a whole. And that's basically a... Um, something that the United States Congress has to do. Um, we can just go back to what happened in the Great Recession in 2008, uh, 2008 and so on. Um, it was basically a TARP with the help of the uh, Federal Reserve that got the United States economy and also the world economy back going, uh, going again. So if we look at the S&P 500, this was a horrible day. And we may see several days... Um, of, of a similar decline here. If you look at the uh, technical indicators for, for the S&P 500, we can see that the MACD is crossing the signal line, heading for lower levels. The RSI is almost oversold at this point. We are 41. The CCI is very negative. The singles are the stochastic. And the Bollinger Band is showing sign of that we are basically very overstretched at this point. So... We may see a pullback tomorrow, but if we cross the 100 moving average, stay below here, and then start trading underneath the 100 moving average, that is a worrying sign because that opens the door to the 150 moving average at 3,162. Almost 100% certainty of that because the 100 moving average will not become support then, it will become resistant and will work as resistant for this market. So, well, we'll have to see. Um, when markets fall this aggressively, 
most of, probably the best thing to do is basically just to wait. Don't enter the market because this is a market that it will in time will continue to go up. It is it is made to go up and and uh, the major companies that are driving the the growth in this uh, industry is basically Apple, Amazon, Google, the big tech companies. Um, so at this point, buying at the discount is probably the best strategy. Basically seeing how far this market will go and we'll see a turnaround, especially in, for example, the Stochastic and the CCI will show early signs of this market turning around. At this point, there is no clear sign that we are going to turn around. And therefore, there's no point basically discussing whether or not we rally to the 50 moving average. We will most likely go lower from here. So you look at the Dow Jones. We fell quite aggressively. We hit support here at the 300 moving average, pull back, and at the moment, the 300 moving average is supported. This was also supported back uh, only a month ago. In This was in the end of September, yeah, nearly, a, uh, nearly a month ago. But at this point, we probably have a pullback. You can just see how far we have crossed the Bollinger Band. And that is, that is quite unusual. We saw it here and we, saw we had a pullback and then we fell even more before we rallied again. So we this this is highly unlikely we are very very overstretched at this point so it it's not strange if we have a pullback towards the 100 moving average which will act as resistant at this point but but um, we have been here before the 100 300 moving average has been significant support um, in the past but we need to see how far we will go in, in this market if we break below the, the 300 moving average, then we have the 200 moving average and the 150 underneath. And if those breaks, then watch out below. We are going to go significantly lower if that is the case. But we can just see if you do this line, this area here has in the past been significant uh, support. So we may pull back a little bit from here. Uh, we need encouraging signs, especially from the stochastic and the CCI. They will show early signs. At this point, we are significantly oversold, but all the technical indicators are looking very, very bearish for the Dow Jones at this point. So look at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ fell as well. We're down 3.10% at this point. We pulled back a little bit. But we did not get all the way down to the 100 moving average, which I believe will be our first major uh, support level at 11,000, around 11,000 thereabout. There is also quite symbolic uh, number. Technical indicators for uh, NASDAQ are quite bearish at this point, not as bearish as they are for the Dow Jones and the S&P 500. However, we are not oversold in the, in the, in the NASDAQ. We are at 40 that means there's a lot of room to the downside in this indice. And that is probably the reason why we will go towards the 100 moving average before we bounce. If you break the 100 moving average, that opens the door to the to these levels here. We can see that this was previous uh, support. So we have it there. That is 10,600. And we also found support here at that level when we broke down only a month ago. If that breaks, then we open the door to the 150 moving average, which is here, and that is around 10,300. And well, there's a, then there we have the 200 moving average, but it would be highly unlikely that we'll go lower from here. The maximum I think that we'll basically go is 10,600 range. So, well, this has been a, quite a day for the stock market. Um, everything basically can happen, but stimulus and uncertainty and the coronavirus are basically the things that are driving this market lower. And we can, we can basically come to the conclusion that none of those things are going to go away anytime soon. It is just a matter of whether or not the market will get used to that uncertainty, the coronavirus 
and that there's not going to be any stimulus uh, for quite a long time. So coronavirus is going to be probably a year. The stimulus probably will take uh, uh, four months for, for that to happen. And uh, the uncertainty, what happens after the election and so on, well, that is just going to be something that we'll have to uh, wait and see next week when the election is over. And furthermore, world economy is doing horribly at this point. You just looked at the DAX, uh, the, the German index um, indice, and that fell around 5% today. So it's not only just in the United States, it's basically all, all over the world. So I hope you find this video helpful. You're welcome to subscribe to and click here on the subscribe button. Hit the like button and the bell button in order to see our newest videos. Good luck and thank you very much. Thank you.